Earlier this month, WDSU investigates uncovered a mistake that left out more than 300,000 Louisiana voters from an effort to expand mail in voting. And we are told that the error has been corrected, but Chief Investigative Reporter Greg LaRoe says there are still concerns heading into the upcoming elections. He joins us live from a Gentilly polling location. And Greg, what has people worried? Yeah, uh, Gina, the coronavirus uh, really has folks worried about how to hold safe elections this fall, especially at polling places like a busy one here at the Milne home. Secretary of State Kyle Ardwin's reaching out to voters 65 and older to give them the option to vote by mail, but some say much more could be done. We should be, you know, maximizing people's opportunity to exercise their fundamental rights. Chris Kaiser with the ACLU of Louisiana is concerned that rapidly changing rules in the midst of a pandemic could have a chilling effect on voting rights. In many cases, the people who I think their, their health and well-being is most at risk in this pandemic are the, are the folks whose interests are also most at risk in the election. The Secretary of State sent letters April 1st to 315,000 Louisiana seniors to let them know they could vote by mail. When WDSU asked about those voters, it was discovered another 300,000 should have been included. It was a human error. I'm appreciative of us catching it uh, and moving forward to quickly expedite uh, letters to those additional um, people that can participate in this program. We took a closer look at who's eligible for the program. A majority of Louisiana 65 and older voters are Democrats, 54 percent. Compare that to all registered voters, of which Democrats make up 41 percent. The number of senior Republicans is on par with the general population, but independents and other parties are underrepresented by more than half among voters 65 and older. These numbers were as of June 9th, after Ordon's initial outreach to seniors, but before most of the 300,000 he had left out were contacted. Before April 1st, more than 92,000 Louisiana seniors had registered to receive mail-in ballots year-round. As of June 9th, another 2,500 had signed up. That's an increase of less than 3%, or less than 1% of all voters 65 and older. Still, Ardwin has resisted efforts to open it up to all voters, even if the federal government would cover the cost to help contain spread of the coronavirus. Receiving one-time funds to run elections during an unprecedented crisis at the expense of radically changing our election system is a trade-off we are not willing to make. This is not requiring everybody to vote by mail. This is giving voters more options so that they can do whatever they need to do to take care of their family and not have to choose between their fundamental right to vote and being safe in the time of an international pandemic. Voting rights advocate Mirna Perez testified recently before a congressional panel on holding elections during the pandemic. She says more stimulus money should go toward making sure voting is accessible and accurate in anticipation of an increase in mail-in votes this fall. Earlier this month in Georgia, where voters stood in line for hours to cast ballots in person, officials say thousands of mail-in votes weren't counted because of software and scanner problems. The answer is not tell voters that they have to wait in long lines. Like in, in the past, long lines were disenfranchising and deterring. Now they could be deadly. Five states send out mail-in ballots to voters for every election. 28 states and Washington, D.C. will give mail-in ballots to anyone who requests them. Louisiana is one of 17 states where you need an excuse to vote by mail, like being sick, out of town or in the military. In the crisis that we are experiencing now, it is really hard to argue that that option should not be available to everybody. Voting rights advocates say those who worry that more mail-in votes would lead to fraud just don't have the evidence to back up that claim. The real concern, they say, is that if people feel the only way to stay safe is to stay home, then they'll also stay silent on Election Day. Reporting live from Gentilly, Greg LaRose, WDSU Investigator.